Um, hi, everybody. Um, yes, this is a <laughs> different circumstances than we used to, um, but uh, so typical to the times that we live in and experiencing, we adjust basically and, and change um, as things happen. Um, we all got the um, correspondence from Prestige Academy that um, the real time sessions for today, the rest of today, from period um, three, four, or from four, five, and six onwards today and all of tomorrow um, have been cancelled because we are upgrading our internet system at work. Um, and for that particular reason, we are recording the session as on either side of rather not just do another video, do a, a sort of a zoom with myself basically. Um, and because it's recorded, um, and I'll go through the slides um, without an audience. You guys can watch it. I'm, I'm, I'm uploading it later on uh, today, so everybody can can still see what would have happened in class today. Uh, there were a few students who didn't get the message. Um, that's why at uh, quarter to two for the session when it was scheduled to be uh, real time, um, I did address the students who didn't get the message to share with them um, the arrangements for today and tomorrow. Um, those three students, um, um, Nilan, uh, Jamie, Dana, um, thanks for anyway for signing in. Um, but uh, I think everybody got the message now that um, <laughs> if you haven't refilled your gas, make sure you refill your gas. There's a storm in the Cape uh, for the students in Kauteng. Um You guys are used to this, but it's still different in a, in, in, in a different manner. Um, but um, stay safe. Um, enjoy your weekend. Um, but let's first get back to business um, and complete the session, which is on Chapter 2. Um, and it specifically deals with um, the customer and the customer's buying process. Um, it's very important for any salesperson to realize and understand that um, the reason why uh, we want to obviously um, um, know the reasons why customers buy certain products and why they buy it at certain times and, um, and and that's part of the whole study of, of consumer behavior, which is a subject in itself. But specifically for this chapter, we have sort of summarized and captured the essence of the process of um, that the um, consumer goes through when they are buying a product. Um, and like we always do at the start of a particular chapter is we go through the um, objectives um, of what we want to achieve with this particular session. Um, and right here at the start, um, just for logistical re purposes, um, I'm going to do a 40 minute Zoom session and capture what we would have done in class as we've agreed for this week um, because we do not have um, a 60 minute Zoom session, but we have a 60 minute class that we will do the delivery of the work in the 40 minute session and then we'll allow questions um, in the uh, um, in the remaining session or um, section of the of the hour or time of the of the one hour class, after all of um, you have been again just um, logged in again onto the session, which effectively leaves us about um, 17, 18, 15 minutes to um, to address any specific concerns and to summarize the. The, the main aspects of the particular chapter. So in this case, it's going to be a 40 minute session because there's no interaction and no students participating in the session. We will then obviously um, just do the presentation of the work that was required uh, for this particular um, or that would have been covered in the session. Um, in chapter two people, it's important for us to help you understand and explain to you what the selling process is. Um, and then also some uh, topic that most of you in, in many other subjects have, uh, and specifically in marketing, um, have been exposed to before is the different motivations why people make certain decisions and buy certain products. Um, and um, we start off by looking at Maslow's hierarchy of, of 
motives um, regarding why certain decisions are made by customers. Mainly because Maslow was the first psychologist to sort of um, try to, to get a structure um, or a hierarchy, um, to use that specific word, um, documented where that, that, that explains the process of how consumers behave. Um, we're also going to be looking at um, and describing the factors that influence the customer's um, uh, buying decision and then also explain why the buying decision is actually um, a choice. So let's get right into it, um, people, uh, students. Um, I think in order to, um, for any salesperson to be um, successful and um, over a period of time, um, they would require to be uh, to have as much information as possible about the product that, um, that they are selling, as well as the company they're representing and the market to which they are selling. I think um, salespeople um, have realised now, and especially now in, in in the modern era, that for modern salespeople, it's important to understand what the needs of the customers are. Um, so it is. Conver uh, definitely converted from, and I think we've addressed this in, in the first chapter as well, the whole approach of businesses and, and, and specifically the sales departments in businesses, linked obviously to the philosophy um, of, the, of, of the company, um, have converted towards a more sort of marketing, customer oriented, uh, customer centered approach where the needs of the customer is identified and in an attempt to solve that or, or satisfy that need or solve the problem that the customer have, a particular product is then designed, which makes it easier then to sell because we are offering something to the customer that they wanted and that they actually indicated that they have a need for. So therefore, there shouldn't be too much of an effort um, for actually for them or for us to sell it to them. Uh, and for them then to buy it because uh, it is a product that will be satisfying a particular need that they have identified or a problem that they've identified that we are now trying to obviously solve for them jointly. Um, the salesperson also obviously needs to understand that the customer, um, um, th there's different ways in which customers makes their purchase and decision. There's a lot of factors and we'll deal with it later in the chapter, cultures, family, external factors that influence the decision um, making process or the, the, the process that a, a consumer goes through before they actually purchase a product. Um, the reasons why um, is obviously we're trying or Maslow have, um, have attempted to, um, to identify with this hierarchy of needs and the particular order specifically in which these needs are satisfied. Um, the customer's needs, um, or reasons for why they're buying a particular product um, is something that we'll definitely also be looking at in this chapter. Right, let's move on. Um, I was about to say any questions, but obviously they, there's nobody present, so um, there shouldn't be any questions. Um, I'll be concerned if I'm asking questions myself to myself, then, then you know it's, uh, it's late in the day. Um, when um, the selling um, process starts, um, or at the start of a selling process, it's very important for any, every, any salesperson, sorry, um, for any salesperson to establish the needs of the customer. And um, it's very important um, that when you are trying to sell something to a customer, potential customer, that you clearly differentiate between the features, the advantages and the benefits where the features specifically is the physical characteristics of a particular product. If it's a new Toyota Corolla, it might be the ABS brakes. What kind of advantage with the ABS brakes gives you? Well, that particular feature, the advantage of that feature, is that it actually allows you to stop within five meters or 10 meters or 20 meters, whatever they claim um, in, in, in the specs. And then the benefit, obviously, for the customer buying this new Toyota with this particular feature is the fact that they, um, they will keep their family safe. So differentiate clearly between the features, advantages, and benefits, because that's something that in any sales process, 
um, or any salesperson would start with, if we go to the next screen, that's where in the order of selling, that's usually where the salesperson um, in, 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 in structuring a particular format for them, uh, for their sales process. Um, to start with um, providing the customer or the potential customer with the features of the product, then also highlighting obviously the advantages that this particular feature will offer them. And as a result of that, um, and in attempting to close the sale, the benefit that you as the customer would get from buying this product with this specific feature and the advantages that come with it. Obviously, the situation will be adapted um, for every particular situation and it will be different for every particular situation. But um, um, it is of the utmost importance that your potential customer or your prospective customer is given the opportunity to ask any questions. Do not continue and trying to make a sale by just um, repeating your prepared presentation or dialogue that you have prepared um, because then um, especially uh, the greatest challenge then is obviously that you will lose the client because the client um, it's very clear to the client then that you have um, drafted a script uh, that you are just following the script you're not listening to what they're saying and very often <coughs> excuse me very often the mistake is then made that because you are um, um, overloading the customer with information and not picking up on the signals that they are sending out to you that, whoa, 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 I've heard enough. Actually, now I'm ready to buy. Where can I sign? You missed that opportunity because you are just continuing in your prepared script um, and not listening to what the customer says to you. I, hang on, I'm ready to actually buy. You can stop talking now. Um, and I think that's very important because very often um, that has been one of the challenges that most salespeople have been confronted with. But um, I think nowadays not so much anymore because the customers are actually a bit more, uh, or the, the salespeople are a bit more um, customer centered. Um, in one of our sessions yesterday, a student actually said to me um, her experience with um, salespeople in, in recently has been that they are definitely more attentive, that they definitely listen better, and that they really actually are trying to solve your problem and not just sell you something, which is a good sign because I think that was the kind of um, 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 uh, how sales have evolved over the uh, over the last um, five, six, seven, eight decades. Um, especially um, prior um, Second World War, where economies were very sort of um, production centered um, and were producing stuff at uh, in mass and then getting the salespeople into to sell it and then often sell it to people who don't really uh, need it or actually shouldn't or couldn't afford it, uh, as opposed to listening to what the customer wants, going out and, 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 and des uh, designing a product that they can sell that will solve the problem of the customer because they have paid attention to what the customer's real needs are. Something that all of us are familiar with, um, or most of you are familiar with, you've done this in business marketing, you probably do it uh, every single year for as long as you study with us, and um, I've also got some good news for you. It will actually follow you for, for the rest of your life if you are in a profession where um, you are dealing with customers. Um, Maslow has, 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 has been, um, or Maslow was a, a psychologist. He was the first one um, who attempted to study the human um, qualities um, and their lives to try and determine what motivates people um, because if we know what motivate people, it will be quite simple for us to design something that will uh, that we can offer them to satisfy that particular um, reason why or motivation why they they need something. Um, Maslow, quite simply, with those five levels um, 
in his hierarchy of needs says quite simply that your physiological needs, your basic needs for survival, food, shelter, um, water, um, breathing, oxygen, um, these kind of things we need on a continuous basis. And if they are not satisfied, regardless what, <coughs> oh, excuse me, where we are in our lives, we will not get to the top level, which is self-actualization. We will not be able to tick those um, bucket list, um, 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 or tick, tick the bucket list and, 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 and ensure that um, we are addressing needs that gives us um, a, a purpose. Um, before we get to that, we need to survive. So the order in which it happens is very important. And obviously, and the pyramid structure was also chosen because we definitely have more physiological needs at the bottom than we have um, self-actualization needs at the top. Um, the order in which it happens is as important as the different levels that have been identified. So whenever you're confronted with a question, an exam paper or an assignment that asks you anything about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it's not just about knowing the five levels of needs that um, that he has identified that motivates people to, to buy a particular product or use a service. It's the order in which it happens. Physiological safety followed by um, your loving or belonging, um, esteem needs, and then finally your self-actualization needs. Um, it's the order as much as it is the different levels. What types of different motivations do we have? Um, we have manifested motivations and then also there's um, latent motivations. You'll manifest it and, and on the next slide you'll see if we're applying it to a specific situation of a VW Jetta that somebody um, or that a, a client buys. Um, the manifested motives is um, those that you are willing to admit to. You said, listen, I'm, I'm fine. I mean, this is a very great vehicle. I'm, I'm, I'm comfortable in saying and expressing that this is the motivation why I got this vehicle. Uh, your latent motives are sort of uh, more hidden uh, in the sense that um, people are or sometimes reluctant to admit uh, or sometimes they don't even know that that was the reason or the motivation why they um, bought a particular item. So let's look at the example of the uh, VW Jetta. When you're buying a VW Jetta, your manifested motives will be um, and which is the ones that we um, keenly express is that it is an or admit uh, it's a large comfortable vehicle. Yes, it is. Of course it is. Um, a few of my friends own a Jetta. That's also, I mean, I, I admit to that. Um, the power of the engine and the shape um, ensure that it performs well at all times. We can admit to that, which because it's a fact. Our more sort of hidden or latent motives is um, where we say, oh, I didn't know that um, by buying a Jetta, it actually um, will give me an image of being stylish and financially stable. I wasn't aware of that. Or maybe you were, but you weren't prepared to admit to that fact. Or you were reluctant to admit to that fact. And then another one could also be that the car demonstrates my success and position in society. Maybe sometimes you are aware of that fact, but you don't want to admit it openly. Um, and in other words, it would have been a manifested motive. Um, you sort of keep it to yourself. You are aware of the fact, but you don't really admit it. So again, from the previous slide, this is an application on how we um, can differentiate between the types of motives, our manifested and our latent motives. There are a number of factors that influence the buying behavior. Um, as a matter of fact, um, the rest of the chapter um, is occupied by, by that. And um, I'm just going to give an introduction to them um, and not specifically spend too much time on each of them individually. I think um, the session itself would not be, would not be um, um, enough or would not allow us enough time to address all of them in detail as we should. But um, our social and cultural factors play an extremely important role as external factors that influence or impact on how we as consumers make our decisions. 
Some of these factors include our family, the social class that we find ourselves in, demographics, in other words, um, often where we find ourselves, what age group we're in, psychographics more related to our lifestyle, our personalities for sure, it will definitely impact, and the different, <coughs> excuse me, the different cultural groups that we belong to. So um, if time still allows it, and I think it will, let us go through each of these ones individually. Um, I will not start another one of these if I see that we're going to end the run out of time. So let's go back to, or let's forward ourselves to the impact that your, or the influence that a family can have on the decision um, that consumers make. Um, pro, I don't know, from, from a very early age on, our families are the first ones that we know um, or exposed to. I mean, you're born into a particular family, um, not by choice. Um, and I think as a result of that, the people that you look up to immediately um, are your family members, um, your siblings, your mother, your father. And they play extremely important, if not the most single most important role in the early attitude forming of you as a future consumer, individual consumer towards um, a particular brand or a particular product. Now, families go through different um, um, stages in their lives. And um, I've not put the, um, the diagram up on the screen, but you will see on page 20 in your manuals or your textbooks that that particular table, table 2.1, deals with the family life cycle. People go through different cycles in their lives. I mean, um, you, you, you're at school, then you become a teenager, then you become a student, then you're at the house, um, you become independent, later on you become um, involved in, in, a, in a permanent relationship um, by marrying and you start a family. And through all these stages, your, um, your needs change. And the needs change with each cycle that you enter into, right up to the day that you um, have reached a mature age and you've retired and basically you are in the twilight of your lives. So the different cycles in which people find themselves has a huge impact on um, <clears throat> the products that they buy or the services that they use. For me at this point, absolute no. I mean, on the way into work this morning, I was listening to KFM and one of the um, people on the breakfast show um, admitted that uh, to his fellow colleagues that um, his wife's um, um, 20 weeks pregnant and that they will become a family very soon and he will be a dad. Um, and obviously it was done in a, in a joking matter and everybody was trying to contribute to the conversation in an unfunny way. But um, yes, um, the phases that we go through, his life has now been changed where it was just him and his wife as a, as, 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 um, as, um, as a family. Um, um, had more sort of selfish needs and that only included their own needs that needs to be satisfied because there was nothing else that they had to care for. It is not changed, even if the baby is not born yet. I mean, we're still um, halfway through the pregnancy, but um, you're already preparing for um, another person that you now have to take care of. And because of that, um, your needs, your buying patterns change. You're not going out and buying a specific product that you used to be buying. You're now going out and buying nappies and, 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 and baby clothes and stuff like that. So um, somebody um, or customers or consumers in each phase of their family life cycle will have different needs. And that's why it's so important for a salesperson to try and establish a lifelong relationship with a customer. If you've created a relationship with a customer that makes them loyal towards your product or your brand, once they go through the different, excuse me, life cycles or phases in the stages in their life cycle, they will stick with you. They will buy another product that your company offers because of the established relationship that you have um, or the relationship that you have established with them. 
Also important is the different roles that individuals play in a, um, or different roles in a family that um, is played by uh, the members of that family. And that you'll see in table 2.2 on page 21. Um, I'll use an example here. Family, and the weather outside today is oh, horrible. So instead of actually, nobody's really in the mood to do anything. So let's decide to rather quickly get in the car as a family and do a drive through and get some fast food from McDonald's or Steers or Burger King or KFC or whatever. Um, when you get into the vehicle, each of those family members have a specific role and influence on the final decision on what to purchase. Firstly, they have to decide and get to a conclusion as to what particular uh, company they're going to support. Let's say, for instance, they decided to eventually end up going to McDonald's. Now, the deciders are the people who actually decide what are we going to, where are we going, we are going to buy, and then also specifically what we want to when we get there. So that's the next challenge. We've got a family of four in the car, we've decided we're going to McDonald's, so one decision has been made already. The next step is that we now have to place our orders. So each of us have different specific preferences. We place our order, um, and that puts us in that decider category store. We are not buying. Dad drives the car, he's got the wallet, and he's going to buy. But Dad, then as buyer, becomes the payer as role, so he fulfills that particular function. He was also involved in the decision-making process as to where we're going. So in this specific case, Dad will be part of the decision-making process. He would be the one buying as well as the one using the product that we have bought. So he will fulfill all three roles. The children in the car have just been deciders because they decided what they wanted to and where they want to get it from. And they'll be users because they'll be eating the food that we have purchased. So each of us in the vehicle, for instance, will have, in this particular scenario, will have a specific role to play. So the family roles or the roles that each member of the family plays is as important in the process of selling because we have to consider who's the decision maker at the end of the day. If it's just you who decided this afternoon because you don't have a family, it's just you on your own, on the way back from college that you're going to go through McDonald's drive through you will be the decider, you will be the payer, and you'll be the user. And it's only you that you have to consider in your specific needs. So yes, every member in the family, depending if everybody's present, obviously, or if some members of the family are present, will have a specific role to play. The role of the decider, the buyer, or the user. These roles can differ, um, and they obviously will differ. And it will depend on the type of product that you purchase. Um, if it's just a takeaway um, fast food um, solution for, for your specific needs of hunger this evening, it's an easy decision to make. But the roles differ based on what specific product you are going to buy, and therefore we need to make sure who makes the purchase, who's the principal characters in the decision-making process, who are the users of this particular product that we or service that we're going to um, obtain, and who is the person who has the buying power. And a very important, and I will close with this because I don't want um, too much information in one session for us. I'm going to close with this. The changing roles of the different genders. The role of the male and the female, and, um, or males and females, have changed dramatically in the last decade or so. Where traditionally, women stayed at home and they were raising the family um, and um, men went out and worked and earned the salary to actually support the family. Roles have changed. Women have become, um, have, have, have also, and they've always had that, exp um, 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 they've always had those aspirations. It was just not always, so sometimes frowned upon over in, in, in previous generations. But women now also have become more educated. Just in this particular class, we've got a 50-50 split between male and female students. Um, 
student, uh, um, female students have become more educated, they're qualifying themselves, they are pursuing careers, they have aspirations, they want um, a, a particular profession and career as well. And as a result of that, um, the time that they have available to take care of their household um, is obviously limited. So it's very often that the roles are now reversed um, and that uh, you have a stay-at-home dad or work-from-home dad and mum is working full-time elsewhere. Um, that impacts on who becomes the decision maker. Where traditionally, let's say for instance, we're buying daily, um, our daily groceries. Uh, in the old traditional setup, the female would have gone after she dropped the kids at school, she would have gone to um, to pick and pay or checkers or whatever and bought the groceries. She makes the decisions on behalf of the family on what um, needs to be in the cupboards and the fridges at home. Now, the roles have not changed and mum is not there because dad's dropping the kids off at school because he's working for mum because mum is doing a nine to five uh, full time job and he now becomes the individual buying the groceries for that family. So the roles have swapped. And from a consumer point of view, it's important for a business to know that because these roles change, how people or male and females, how they see their roles um, impact on how decisions are taken. They might end up buying exactly the same products, um, but the way in which the decisions are made are different. So just make sure that as a salesperson, or future or somebody with the potential to for a career in sales that you always consider the ever-changing roles of males and females. At this point, people, I'm going to say thank you very much for today's session. I'm not going to continue beyond that. Um, I, will, um, I will put this video for your... Um, I will put this video on, on Moodle for you to view sometime during the course of the evening or over the weekend, but I will upload it today so it is available to you. And although you did not take part in the session live, um, thank you very much for viewing this. And we will see each other again after this long weekend and uh, stay safe and we'll see each other next week. Thanks very much.